by fans, for fans, the hog style. And now, here's your host, Sean Conti. Welcome back to the Hogsty, DC's unofficial leading source for all things Redskins in the NFL. This is the post game show brought to you by TicketClub.com. Steve Thomas and Jamal Forrest are here with me today. And guys, I'm getting kind of tired of saying that. I'm starting to feel really repetitive. I think we need a new intro. Every week it's the DC unofficial leading source. Aren't you the intro guy? Just come up with another one. I know, You're I know. You're complaining to me about it? It's time to hey, start man, typing I'll, out. I'll say stick with what works. <laughs> stick with what works. Don't fix it up. unless it's broke. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we'll stick with that for now. We are sitting here at 6-3 and three on the season, it feels great to say, after this win against Tampa Bay. So how are you guys feeling? I'm sure the answer should be very, very good, extremely positive, right? Oh, I'm definitely happy they won. I'm a bit confused, to be honest. I'm kind of – I'm trying to wrap my head around what game we just watched because it was very extremely yeah, – oh, my God. I know exactly just, what you mean. You know, and I told you off the air, Sean, I, I was watching this game with a Bucks fan – Next to me because I had to go to the sports bar because mm-hmm. it's not, not on local TV here and you know screw you direct TV and, um, and and he was just distraught you know absolutely distraught uh, which I understand more so as the game yeah went oh yeah on, more so said, he right? got louder and louder and more <laughs> upset as the game went on which I understand uh, very confusing game very happy we won you know we'll get into it I guess and weather wise by the way yeah I'm we'll con- do a- I, I, I curse myself because last week on last week's show I was bragging about how warm it was down here. I had to bust out long pants for the first time of the year this week. It, 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 yes. yeah, we, have a, yeah. the, we have our cold snap. It was down in the 50s, so I was highly upset. I, I need to not talk about the weather anymore because I was punished. I, I shoveled snow off my car today, Steve. I, don't I, had to to wear, I actually had to wear a sweatshirt, which bugs me. <laughs> get out of here, man. Give it a rest. All right, well, before we get into it, Jamal, did you get to watch this game from the comforts of your home or were you out at a sports bar yeah, for this one? Oh no, nah, no sports bar for me. I got to watch it at the house. Um you know it's kinda weird. I was thinking about it after we won. I think the Redskins are actually undefeated every single time I picked them to to lose <laughs> that week. Um I don't know if if that's the right. official record, but I know right. for a fact I picked us to lose against um who was it? The the Packers, um I wanna say the Panthers and definitely this game. And from what I, from what I understand, we three and zero. Yep. I need to start yep. picking us to lose more often. I know that much. Yep. We are a expectation defying team. Whatever makes the most sense for them to do, what you're expecting them to do. I think we all predicted a loss we this week. Yeah. So yeah, just to your point, it's they're gonna they're going to defy expectations every yeah. single turn for sure. But yeah, I got to watch that at the house. You know, um, when I saw him, I saw him pull away late. Uh, not necessarily pull away in, in the in the most. Uh, pretty sense of the word i guess or pretty right. fashionate of the word but you know it, it it looked good um good enough so we'll get into it more but it, it looked good enough from my point of view amen to that six and three looks good on you washington well steve why don't you hit us with these stats so we can get right. into the context here. uh alex smith is our quarterback of course he was 19 for 27 178 yards one touchdown 100 100.5 quarterback rating Adrian Peterson had a uh, day for him. He was 19 carries, 68 yards with 3.6 yards per attempt, long of 18. Capri Bibbs was 3 for 28. Alex Smith had two scrambles for 16 yards. Uh, in the receiving end, Maurice Harris was once again our leading receiver, five receptions, 52 yards on five targets. Jordan Reed was 4 for 51 on six targets. Josh Jackson, 4 for 46, one touchdown. Michael Floyd, 2 for 15 on three targets. Capri Bibbs, 2 for 13 on four targets. Adrian Peterson was 2 for 1. And on the Tampa Bay Bucks side, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 29 of 41 for 406 yards. T- 406. Yep, uh, t- two interceptions. Dang. And quarterback rating of 82. Peyton Barber was the leading rusher for Tampa Bay at 13 for 61, 4.7 yards per attempt. Ryan Fitzpatrick scrambled for 35 yards also. On the receiving end, this is where it gets interesting, folks. Chris Godwin, seven receptions, 103 yards. Jaquez Rogers, eight receptions, 102 yards. Deshaun Jackson, five for, f- five for 57. Lord. 67, five for 67. Adam Humphreys, two for 53. Mike Evans, three for 51. And the other guy, O.J. Howard. Another highly yeah, productive. Yeah, the other guy, O.J. Howard, is only 1 for 15. <laughs> Um, no, I'll do defense later, I guess, uh, uh, Sean. Unless you want me to, you want me to do defense now? <laughs> All right. uh, no, let's save okay. it. Let's save it. I kind of liked breaking right. it up like that. 
Okay, so do we want to start with Redskins offense? I mean, in, in keeping with our uh, expectation-defying theme here, we scored second-half touchdowns yeah. in this game. So that's an it's interesting crazy. thing. I know, it's like, <laughs> so, you know, you never would have seen it. But the first half of this game, pretty much what we've seen from the Redskins offense to this point. Um, surprised that they couldn't get anything going at all through this? I mean, it just looked so bad again. Mm, no, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, it's... It's just it's, it's as expected with this offense. It's not that good um, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, we shoot we shoot ourselves in the foot uh, one too many times as well, you know. And it just doesn't it doesn't really help us um, in the sense of execution. Um, I don't put majority of the blame on the coaching and more so on the players. But execution, sometimes play calling um, in in certain situations and certain down and distances, uh, and, and just this the. What we see when we drop back to pass doesn't it just doesn't look good overall. So personally, I'm not surprised. It doesn't matter if we're going up against the 31st ranked defense or the 32nd ranked defense. Um, that's not a problem that they're. Uh, that's not a Bucks Buccaneers problem. It's a Redskins offense problem. So right. until the Redskins offense gets their situation together, get their shit together, it doesn't matter if we face the the 50th ranked. NFL defense. It doesn't matter. We have to get yep. our stuff together. So you I'm not the surprised at all. Right out of my mouth. That's, I, I'm so with you on that. To, to just say for the drives, three plays, five yards for the first drive, punt. Eight plays, 55 yards, got a field goal on the next one, but three plays, six yards on the next one, uh, punt again. You got another field goal, but it's just punt, field goal, punt, field goal. And a lot of those drives are just completely stalled. I mean, there's Agreed. nothing. Yeah, going I mean, Agreed. first of all, the rebuilt mm-hmm. offensive line. Did a fairly decent job on pass pro, uh, you know, considering we had uh, uh, Cooper, Cooper and yeah, Howard both got in there at various times, <laughs> you know, the the, the new guys. But, uh, you know, Ty and Secchi went out. Christian had, I think, one play. Uh, you know, of course, that was the sack play, you know, uh, or uh, that was one of the sack plays on Smith. But I thought the offensive line did a decent job. Um, r- run blocking, another story, you know, the, the number of times we saw – Adrian Peterson on, you know, a stretch play right or left, just get absolutely annihilated because there was zero blocking in front right. of him. I don't think it worked a single time all day. Um, he didn't have a ton of rushing lanes, you know, today. That was, I think, more of an offensive line thing than him. Uh, but listen, you, know, you guys are right. I mean, this offense this year just isn't very good. Um, you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, there isn't anything that's going to happen that's going to make this all of a sudden a high-powered offense. Um, I still think those – we got tons – t- I paid less attention to the mentions on Twitter this time because, you know, I can't. Um, you know, but yeah, – yeah, uh, but uh, there, a lot of people are calling for Colt McCoy. I don't think Colt McCoy makes a single bit of difference whatsoever. This is a talent – this is a Agreed. talent issue more than anything. I do criticize Smith yet again, missed a deep ball. Wide open, Vernon Davis, touchdown pass. That would have That was a game clincher before we even forced a turnover. If you get that, that's a game clincher. You don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, exactly right. And and Smith just flat out missed. That was an easy pass. It should have been complete. should have been a touchdown. Just missed it. He's been just terrible at deep balls. That's the one thing I'm disappointed on him about. But um, overall, yeah, it was a very Redskins offense. You know, considering the status of the offensive line – I didn't think they did too badly, so I give them credit for that, I guess. But it, it's, it was the most – it was a very <laughs> Redskins game offensively. You know, looking at this game to me, and I guess just to go a little bit more into play calling, and we talk about this every week, so it's nothing profound. But we talk about this being Jay's version of the West Coast yeah. offense, kind of spread the ball around, you know, throw it short, pound, pound the ball. I, I can't – looking at a game like this again, it's just starting to feel like it's not really a version of the West Coast offense that we're seeing. It's just like – like you said, it's a it's an offense with talent issues, and there's not a lot of creativity in a lot of those dump-offs and screens. So it just feels like it's a, an offense by necessity, and it's barely working versus this is like an actual strategy we have about building a, building a team, and it didn't work. I don't think you know that I – mean? I think this game plan was a, probably a bit more conservative than normal. Uh, you know, for obvious reasons, you know, and that we just weren't sure what we were going to get in the offensive line. But they did try a four vertical concept play, you know, at least once or twice in this game. Uh, that didn't work, it, you know, of course. Um, but, but I think a lot of it today was just because of the, the massive amount of injuries that they had, you know, more than anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I did notice we finally, finally, I, if I can find my note on that, 
the second half. I can't find my note not right sitting right here, but we finally threw to the sticks on third and long. Thank God. You know, that, that's got to be – that's a first for Jay Gruden. You know, I, you know, maybe somebody got in his ear. Maybe somebody bribed him. You know, I don't know. You know, maybe his wife is denying something at home. You know, if he doesn't start throwing to the sticks, something happened. And, of course, you know, it was incomplete, but at least we tried. I'm Fair just enough. glad we didn't see a screen so, on third and, you know, third and eight. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see it again. Don't worry. You'll see it again before the season's out. So we all talk about Jay Gruden and this offense, and we're so happy to get a win. And it's really hard to be too down on the team sitting oh, I'm at not six, down th- on six and yeah. three. No, I know exactly. I'm just you know, it, it's hard to be too critical. But what do you guys think the administration is thinking right now when they see a win like this from Jay Gruden, a team that's playing like this? Do you think it's good enough for Dan Snyder and Bruce Allen to be like, oh, you know, they got this win, they needed this win, or are they really looking at the context and saying this isn't going to fly? Because I think that's. You, yeah, you see my question I mean, here? I don't know. I mean, I think probably Dan is so gun shy. He's probably happy for a win, however it comes. <laughs> you know, well, there's been sure. so much, uh, so much bad that has happened to this team under his tenure. A lot of it's been his fault, or at least derived from him. I, you know, I, the idea that the Redskins are six and three, I think, is so good. Uh, you know, for what this compared to what this franchise is usually at, that I think they'll take it. Would they rather have a high flying offense? Hey. Sure, but I think they'll take it. Hey, can you? I didn't want to uh, yeah. interrupt Steve, but can you repeat the question, uh, Sean, so I can so I can answer this one? Yeah, and I, actually, I'm glad to have the opportunity because I didn't say it very well the first time. <laughs> um, so what I, what I was really asking is, do you think a win like this solidifies Jay Gruden's job here, or okay. are yeah, or is Dan Snyder and Bruce Allen looking at this like it's great to have a win, but man, what an uninspiring win? Um, so in terms of this. In terms of this week alone, uh, nothing changes in terms of the status of Jay. In my opinion, this is all my opinion. Nothing changes with the status of Jay Gruden. Uh, the reason why I say that is simply because this year, regardless of injury, regardless of um, the personnel that he has on the field, regardless of um, you know the staff that he surrounds himself, this is a big year for him. Like him and him alone. Like every single decision that he's made to this point, they know everything that he's done. Out on the outside, we know like a small detail. They know everything he's done inside to work his way up in terms of building his personnel the way he wants to, building his players and, and coaching them and, and scheming them up the way he wants to, everything. All those things that he does in terms of why they brought him in here, they know what he's done to this point. And the reason why it's not, it doesn't change anything yet is because this is a big year for him. If you don't have if you don't have any sustained sustain success and consistent success throughout the year, then that's a problem in the eyes of the front office. So six and three, that's very good. However, um, if you don't find a way to win a division or at least find a a playoff berth, uh, regardless of his wild card or winning the division, then you have an issue on your hands. You're six and three at this point. You cannot find a way to fold and and miss the rest, miss the miss the playoffs. It's just unacceptable in terms of the front office staff. I personally, I feel well, like. Said. Yeah, I, I'll leave it alone at that. But in terms of front office views, I don't think this is the end for Jay Gruden. He still has a lot. Yeah, to I prove. think for this for this team, yeah. uh, really, I think the problem is less Jay Gruden and more of a talent issue. You know, I, I think Jay. You know, if we had Drew Brees and Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, I think Jay would score a heck of a lot of points. It, you know, I, and, and this team, you know, we've got Adrian Peterson, who's you know a Hall of Famer, but you know he's thirty three, and we've got a bunch of nobodies, you know, as receivers. And Jordan Reed, who's having a weirdly down year for whatever reason. I mean, this is a talent-lacking team at the skill positions, and it has been. Yeah. You know, there, there's always been a glaring weakness on this offense, you know, before it was always a running game. You know, always. And then we had, you know, go even go back to the beginning with senior Robert Griffin, that whole chaos. You know, and then we had a young, developing Kirk Cousins. Then we had a mess of a Kirk Cousins. And, you know, now we don't have receivers. There's all, there's, I think with this team, it's more of a talent issue. Than anything else, we know we don't have a Tom Brady transcendent yeah. quarterback. We're not going to have one, you know. But you can do well if you have elite talent. Look at the Bucks. I, I mean, their quarterbacking right. is atrocious for the most part, particularly when Winston's in there. But they've got elite talent, at least at the receivers end, and that allows them to. They make a lot of mistakes, and we'll get to that. But it allows them to do some things because they have so much talent in the receiver core. Just as an example. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great uh, a great point, and we should get to the to those mistakes can, and switch to defense. But I just want to say first, real quick, like 
We talked about this week two. It's not. I don't think that we're that far off. If the team can routinely score twenty one points on offense, we're not that far they off with the defense playing score the way that it does. Points, so that's a problem. I know. I know. I know. Uh, exactly. That's the huge <laughs> glaring problem. But you can score sixteen points in a game like this if you can get a couple more. If you can just get one guy that can give you a touchdown every week or, or something like that. It's we're the not most that boring, far off. uninspired offense of a six and three team you'll ever find. You know exactly. It's extremely exactly. boring, and it's more so annoying than it is anything else. Um, it's very frustrating <laughs> to watch. A, um, it is annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very frustrating to watch. Like when we when we get a punt return, or we force a punt, it's just it's I I consider taking a bathroom break <laughs> when we get the ball on offense. Yep. Um, so I don't I, I don't know, man. It's, it's I, I mean, not, I, you know, just hypothetically, you just imagine if the Redskins are lucky enough to get the playoffs this year, and you know, I'm not predicting that or anything like that at this point. But I, you know, if we start facing teams with real offenses, you know, I, it could get ugly fast. I, I just oh, it'll get as ugly as it was in Atlanta yeah. and New Orleans. It'll be that. It'll be yeah. that ugly. I, I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I think we just got to hold on this year. That that problem, is what. You know, he had he made as much as he could of the circumstances today. I thought, you know, they, they, I didn't think the offensive line run Absolutely. run blocking was good at all. You know, they led led, led a lot of uh, penetration by the uh, you know defensive line of the Bucks. You know, he made some things out of nothing. You know, a few times. Um, you know, it's just I, there's just a lack of talent. I don't know what to say. I mean, and, and injuries. You know, this this team is so injured and has been for two years that you just can't reasonably expect teams to perform at peak level when you've had this many injuries. You really can't. You know, when you lose three-fifths of an offensive line, you have Morgan Moses who's grimacing on every play that they showed him on. You know, and Ty and Secchi's bouncing in on the lineup. It's really hard to be good when you have those kind of problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've seen it for so many years yeah. in a row. You know, this is what happens to yeah. us every time. All right, well, let's can, switch can over wait, to can we stop, the defense. Can I bring up one more? I know we're running out of time with this, but of course, I mean, no, by all means, a- Alex Smith. Uh, you know, I feel like we ought to address him more than we did today. Yeah, because I, I know you guys out there. I'm talking to the fans um, are really down on him, and I, I go back and forth on this guy. Uh, you know, because in, in, in many respects, I don't know who would make more of this offense considering what we have. But at the same time, I see him do things like miss the wide open Vernon Davis pass. Uh, you know, I, I, I just can't in my, 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 my analyst in me tells me that Colt McCoy would make no difference. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know how, I, I think Alex has been somewhat disappointing as a quarterback. Um, you know, cause we're not seeing the 2017 version of Alex Smith, but that version of Alex Smith had Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, you know, who was elite talent, and he just doesn't have that. So what we're really seeing of this year's oh, version yeah. of Alex Smith is what Alex Smith has always been. You know, so I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't want to babble. If you guys have comments, please, no. please comment. I mean, I'll just say I completely agree. I don't think anyone should be surprised. It's been constantly said about him. He's a short ball thrower that depends on strong team around him to do well. And... We don't have that strong team, and everyone, I think, can see that pretty clearly. So nothing about this is surprising. It is disappointing when you see him miss Vernon Davis wide open. That's for, for an obvious touchdown, you know, 10, 10 yards away. But um, like you said, I think you said you hit the nail on the head. There's no one else that's going to do much more, produce much more with this offense. So reserve your criticisms of Alex Smith for next year when hopefully – you know, it's clearer what he's responsible for and what he's not. I just don't think you can't be too critical of him this year for all the reasons that you said. I mean, that's my take on it. Jamal? Yeah. I, I, I'll, oh, man. <laughs> I, I think he's. It's a tough one. We'll just, just look, I'll just, no, hold, just I'll say just it. Just, hold just say off, it. Man. Th- no, I'm, I'm serious. Right. I'm serious. Like, I'll, I'll hold off. I'll hold off and give him. Um, I mean, I've. What I was going to do, I, I was never ever going to say that it was a pass or fail after one year. But at the same time, I was going to judge him this year based on the sole reason that he is a veteran. He is expected to be ready by the start of the season. And to this point in the season, he just hasn't been good. Um, I mean, it is what it is at this point. So I, only thing I can say is, you know, hopefully there's better times ahead. But right now, it's just not – it's a lot of things. It's just not looking good. 
It's such a hard team to assess. That's really the problem. It's so hard to tell who's the issue, and everyone's muddy. Because he's had times when he's been good. You know, and, and the fact of the matter exactly. is, Jay has structured this offense to be a run-first offense. I mean, the the, the um, run-pass balance today, you guys want to know? It was uh, 27 runs, 25 – I'm sorry, 27 passes, 25 runs. Now, last year we were all complaining wow. that Jay didn't run the ball enough, and now we're complaining that Jay runs the ball too much. And, you know, it, you know the fans can't ever get it right. I, I think that one of the things that Jay is actually fairly decent at seems to be tailoring the offense to the offensive strengths. It, you know, he knows that we have a lack of talent in the wide receiver group. He knows that, you know, uh, Adrian Peterson is the bellwether. So we're, you know, we're running, you know, that's what we're doing. Um, so I give Jay props for that, I, I guess. No, I think that's totally fair. I think, I feel like the knock on him was more, uh, he improved his balance issues. I feel like the knock on him was more, he would give up on yeah. that run way too early in games in years yeah, past. He but, didn't this day. Um, tw- 27 to 25. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, I have no complaints no. about that balance. All right, let's do right. defense then. This should be a little bit more fun because we saw some fun stuff, including Josh Norman's incredibly backwards acrobatic interception <laughs> at the beginning of the game, which was fun to watch. Uh, you want to sure. hit us with stats up okay. front before we uh, Mason we do it? Foster, 10 tackle. He was our leading tackler, 10 tackles, 8 solo. Zach Brown, 9 tackles, 7 solo. Ha ha, Clinton Dix, 8 tackles. Fabian Rose, 6. Greg Strong, nice. 5. Danny Johnson, 4. Jonathan Allen, 3. Preston Smith, 2 with the sack. Ryan Kerrigan, Two tackles, uh, Daron Payne, two tackles. Matt Ioannidis had one sack, and that is Redskins defense. I'm not going to bother with the Falcons, Steve, or the Falcons, the Tampa Bay defense, um, really, except to say that the three sacks were Gerald McCoy, Carl Nassib, and Vitavea. So that's that is defensive Fair stats. Oh, and of course, Josh Norman interception, Greg Stroman interception. Yeah, um, turnovers. Turnovers, those interceptions. You saw Kerrigan knock one loose there towards the end of the game. Uh, once again, I mean, partially it's Bucks' mistakes, right, that helped us out so much in this game. But we also saw some great flashes from our guys, and those three plays were, were three examples. I think the Bucks could have been a – this could have been a Bucks blowout, honestly. If the Bucks, I mean, I, I, I think the close. Bucks blew it. I think Bucks had every opportunity, and, um, you know, some of this was on them and them alone. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, the, the Josh Norman interception was a bad throw. Great, great catch by by Josh, yeah. for sure, but bad throw, bad decision. You know, Terrible. they had a fumble That's that right. fumbled forward 20 yards into the end zone. <laughs> you know, they had, you know, another <coughs> fumble at the goal right. line. They had two missed field goals, you know, and then they had the Greg Stroman interception. I mean, at least three of those drives should have been touchdowns. Had a less mistake-prone Let's shoot ourselves in the foot with a 12-gauge shotgun offense. But this is what the Bucks are. The Bucks take chances. Right. They're high-flying, but they don't have the skill at the quarterback position, although Fitzpatrick is better than Winston, but they just make too many mistakes. And, and this is one of those games, you know, for sure. But, 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 I thought Josh Norman did an outstanding job for the most part on Mike Evans. You know, he, you know, he followed him for most of the game. And I thought he did very well on, on Mike Evans and the other big stars, Deshaun Jackson. And, yeah, he had five receptions, 67 yards, you know, but he didn't make a huge impact on the game. So I thought the defense played very – even though they gave up 409 yards, the, the, the key guys were held in check, and that's a really good thing. 409 yards was just Fitzpatrick's numbers, yeah. right? Because they had – wasn't it a historic number? Uh, today, in general, in terms of offensive production, they had like 480 yards, or, or slightly yeah, they more. Had or like 90 on the you know, they had 103 yeah. yards on so, the ground, and so that is uh, 501 total yards of offense. Yeah, which is so, like they heard said something like that's like 1960 or something. Crazy. It's like yeah. the last time someone did yeah, that. They which scored is, three points. Once again, it's and they scored three points exactly. So that's the crazy thing is that you can't. The scoreboard is is misleading because man, they moved that ball. I mean, the truth quite of the matter is, they moved the ball yeah. up and down against the Redskins all day today. That's the truth of the matter. Yeah, they yeah. they could do what they did whatever yeah. they wanted. Uh, and I mean, if it wasn't for, I mean, first off, Redskins defense was very opportunistic. Um, but at the same time, the Buccaneers, like Steve said, just they found ways to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, two missed field goals. Uh, Definitely didn't help them out inside the inside the Redskins territory. I think believe I believe inside the red zone. Um, it just it just never worked out for them. And 
uh, I, mean, I think that was a turning signal for a lot of fans that watched the game, too. Even though we only had three points, you saw that they just kept blowing their opportunities, and it was just waiting there for the Redskins to take over. And essentially, they, they ended up doing so. Um, and the biggest, the key reason was that Strowman interception um, kind of helped solidify things in terms of how this game was going to turn out for the Redskins and uh, basically sum, summed up the exact uh, storyline of the game. I, so, I can't remember another okay, well, play where I remember a guy fumbling a ball 20 yards forward into the end zone. <laughs> me neither. i never seen that. I, credit, credit to that Zach Brown. That was a hell of a play by yeah. Ryan because he yeah, went. Credit. When that, uh, I thought that was Zach Brown that did that. Was it Ryan? Yeah, Ryan okay. Anderson. He chased down. He chased down. Uh, no, no, no. I mean the, the, pun, the, the, ball, the guy who punched the ball out. Yeah, for yeah, the touchback, Anderson. right? Yeah, okay. that was Ryan All right, Anderson. my mistake. Was Ryan Anderson. Anderson. But, yeah, that great play. You know, I, that's what a strange play. And, you know, if that had happened to the Redskins – you know, it would be, you know, we'd just be distraught over a play like that. Right. Yeah, I would have been frustrated. <laughs> now, I'm I'm trying to see, and I'm embarrassed to say I should have just looked this up more before we started recording today, but I'm trying to see if we scored this week off of any of, any of those turnovers. Well. Because um, I don't This is why think... I keep notes. Uh, okay, if you have that, okay. you're the man. Uh, the Josh I'll Norman say. interception, no, that was a punt. <laughs> Uh, screen pass, misfield. I'm looking here. The Swearinger field goal. Okay. Field goal, clock play, fumble. Okay. I don't think we yeah, did. Yeah, I'm trying to see here. Misfield goal. N- nope, we didn't. No, we didn't score Fitz first. Pe- no, we did. We got a field goal on the Stro- off of the Stroman interception. <laughs> so there you okay, go. We got a there field goal. There we go. So. So, I mean, if you're looking for things to nitpick to be disappointed in in a three-point, you know, near shutout from your defense, it would kind of be that. It's – it's um, it obviously wasn't even close to a deal-breaker in this game. But you want to be able to capitalize on those opportunities or those opportunities are – what's the point of ge- of getting them? I mean, I guess, you know, you get a turnover, but still. <laughs> I really didn't think that the Redskins uh, when, defense played that well today. To, to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, they didn't really do no, – yeah, they didn't yards. do a lot of what they needed to do. They didn't make Ryan Fitz, Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick particularly uncomfortable. Yeah, we got the two sacks, but they didn't harass him. Or three sacks, what was it, two? Two sacks. Think, they, didn't make, yeah. they didn't make him overly uncomfortable. What they did do, I thought, well, is credit to Josh Norman in particular for, for his defense on Mike Evans and credit to a number of guys for keeping Deshaun Jackson in check. But other than that, I mean, they let a guy – they let somebody named uh, uh, Peyton Barber. Who? Peyton Barber ran for 4.7 yards a carry against them. That's something he hadn't done all year against anybody. You, you know, I, I didn't think this was not the defense's best day. They ca- they they were able to create. They didn't even really create. T- they created the the fumble, the forward fumble into the end zone for sure. But the interceptions were just freaking dumb plays. That that interception of Stroman was like the worst yeah. pass you'll ever find. It's just a atrocious pass by Fitzpatrick, um, more so than anything. So, I mean, I'm not sure that the defense should be overly proud of the film today. I mean, yes, they get credit for holding them to three points, but it wasn't their best day, I didn't think. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, in, in the yeah. slightest, it was it was a terrible game. And I actually stated that on Twitter towards the end. Like, it's something that I'd never, I'll never necessarily um, be – flaunting in terms of how they how they performed um it was more so like the, the bucks could do anything they wanted um i just give them credit for being johnny on the spot throughout the game um they capitalized on the bad mistakes from the the, the tampa bay offense and continue to do that throughout the game consistently so that's the only saving grace for this defense and uh regardless of how many yards they gave up is the is the reason why they won the game is because of these turnovers for us. They made a play when they had to, um, and when the opportunity presented itself. So, um, it's it's a, a pick your poison type deal, I guess. I don't know, but you guys would know yeah. what I'm getting at. You had to you had to you had to make something happen. Oh, and by the happen. way, we didn't mention the other historically dumb play, which is the incredibly stupid oh decision by Ryan Fitzpatrick to try to lateral that ball after he'd already run for like 30, oh. 30 yards. You know there. You know yeah. th- that was a drive that was headed headed towards the end zone. <laughs> you know, if he had just fallen on the ball, you know that that was just a completely boneheaded play. I'm glad the Redskins were the beneficiary of it because you know the play got called back because of the penalty on it. You know on the review and everything, but what a stupid thing! I mean, this is just the Buccaneers 
you know, over and over and over again, shooting themselves in the foot. And, and you know, listen, I mean, Greg Stroman caught the ball. Josh Norman caught the ball. Ryan Anderson punched the ball out. Good for them. Um, but at the same time, we didn't we didn't. But stop. they're not always going to be air yeah. directly to yeah, you. Yeah, exactly like right. <laughs> you know, so congrats on that. But you didn't stop anybody today. Fair enough. Um, well, the good thing is, too, right quick, is that we don't face any more juggernauts for the near future. <laughs> we have the Texans offense coming in. Um, we'll have a little break in terms of being able to slow offense down. Um, they're still good. They have some weapons on, uh, you know, Deshaun and uh, what's his name? Hopkins. The receiver. I don't know why. I'm, yeah, Hopkins. Um, so, you know, we got we got our hands full. And, and how can I forget about uh, Demarius, the yeah. new receiver? So we'll have our hands full, but it's it's a less potent offense than the last two that They've we've won faced. six in a row. That is true. Six in a row. My goodness. All right. Let's do okay. game balls. Put the kibosh right. on this one, guys. Anybody want to volunteer? Yeah, okay. Who's going to be our first. brave volunteer I'll, I'll this go week? First, I guess. Good man, Steve. Um, Good man. I, I'm going to go defense first because I had this name in my head. Uh, Josh Norman. Josh Norman, I, I think, deserves a game ball for his defense on Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a dangerous guy. He's run tons and tons and tons of yardage up against pretty much everybody now except the Redskins. Josh followed him most of the game. And so I think Josh, you know, definitely uh, – Josh took a lot of – Josh was in the – in the hater parade, you know, for you guys out there for a few weeks. He's out of it now that he's been playing better, but I thought this was an outstanding game by Josh. So, green ball to Josh Norman. Um, and on offense, you know, I, this is harder because I don't know if anybody really deserves a game ball, out here, yeah. quite honestly. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just go stats, you know, wise, I guess, and give it to uh, Maurice Harris for his second positive game in a row. You know, five receptions, 52 yards. But honestly, this is kind of an eh game ball for me on the offense yeah fair enough uh, uh, you, about you to got go? it somebody go well i'll uh i'll do it i'll do it um okay defense um man i i kind of want to give it to a guy like ryan anderson for creating that turnover but i mean he had one tackle this game and i just don't know how much of an impact he had in this in this week other than that uh i'm gonna just go with you and say norman i don't think i've given him one this this year so we'll double up um love the interception and and you know did his job today adequately um beyond that on That's offense a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah i'm gonna do what steve usually does and i'm gonna give it to a coach i'm gonna give it to callahan um for for fielding an offensive line this week that you know did a a moderately good job given the i think we need to get ryan fitzpatrick to present the defensive game ball to Josh Norman today is what I think. I agree. He should. He deserves it. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll just go the the unit as a total. I'll, I'll give them the game ball for forcing, what, three or four turnovers, yeah. I believe. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so I, I give them credit for that. Um, and I, I, give, I just give that unit a game ball because, uh, again, there wasn't necessarily a particular player that stood out defensively. However, collectively, they – forced a lot of they they stopped a lot of key drives um one of the sacks i believe that happened on a miss ah shoot miss field goal um i think it was a sack right before the miss field goal um just a sequence of bad plays that the redskins uh was a part of uh in, in terms of stopping that offense inside of our own territory uh and then again like like i said the turnovers so i give the unit a game ball uh That's offensively a good way to give nobody a game ball <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it, there's a shoot. There's 11 players on the field, man. So, I mean, technically, technically, they got something. Um, yeah, between them, they so, get one game ball. Yeah, they all share. They they can take time. Look, it's what ten weeks in the season. They got enough time to share it. Everybody get it in their in their house for a week. <laughs> um, so, offense. This is the hard one. Um, I guess a good offense as well is 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 a good special teams unit. Um. I think Tristway had a hell of a yeah. game. Yes. Um, I, I think he had a few that was inside the 20. Uh, and for that reason, I will give Tristway a game ball. Um, I would say Josh Dawson next, but at the same time, it was actually clutch. I give I give him credit for it, but in terms of a game ball, I, I don't think we've gave, given Tristway a game ball this year. Um, nope. Correct no, me if I'm wrong, so. but I don't think we've given one this year. So uh, I believe he deserves it. Uh, for offense that is as potent as they did, they they had a lot of drives where they had to start inside, uh, deep inside their own territory. So, trust me. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm glad yeah, you made. Yeah, I'm glad you brought him team. up because if you just look at numbers, he's not going to make the Pro Bowl, 
And the reason is, you know, his yards per punt isn't very good. It's been it's toward the bottom of the NFL, but and people aren't going to vote for that. Just your average fans who aren't going to study punters. But this dude has been burying absolutely burying punts inside the twenty, inside the ten, all year long, and he did it today. You know, again. So I mean, props to Trust Way. You know, I think he's been having an outstanding season that's probably going to go unrecognized. But he's had an outstanding season. So that's a good game. I'm glad you did that, Jamal. It's a good call out because he's probably more worthy. <laughs> Part of me says I, he, I should yeah. rip my game ball out of Maurice Harris's hands and give it to Tress. <laughs> but he already has it now. It's already in his locker. So Yeah. I mean, shoot, the way things are going with this offense, you may have another chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's, that's not right. necessarily good when the punter is getting more than one game ball. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll leave it there. That was the game recap for Tampa Bay. We, of course, have Houston coming up this week, so we'll have a preview episode this week for that, and we'll be back with you in a week's time for the recap. Keep checking back at thehogsdie.com, and we'll see you later. Take care. Cut. Hey, Jim.